Hey Deckers, The Elder Scrolls Online is currently free to play across all platforms till April the 9th, so we thought we'd have another look on the Steam Deck as it's been a while since we checked this one out and also update our installation guide. As you can see, we do get some spikes in and around town on the higher settings, and this is why I will recommend medium overall, and I will reiterate that in a little while. But overall, it is running fantastically well on the Steam Deck, with up to 90 frames per second on the OLED, and you're going to get a solid 60 frames per second on the LCD, apart from some heavy towns. Now you may see some huge lag spikes when you're playing. This is a known issue. You just need to go into the Steam menu and make sure that you close the ZeniMax launcher, which sits in the background. You can just scroll down to it when you press the Steam button and press X to close that, and then all of your stutter will be gone. Now, as you can see here, when I'm running even high settings in dungeons, but medium definitely is more stable. If you uncap the frame rate, you are actually getting 100 frames per second. It seems to be capped at 100, I'm not quite sure why, but it does seem to be very stable when it's up there. On the deck though, it will draw around 21 watts at medium settings. They'll get a good two to two and a half hours battery life. But if you do want to really eke this out, and thanks to GeForce now for giving us a key to test this out, it is now also available on GeForce now. So you can actually play this at the absolute maximum settings. However, on the Steam Deck, because it's browser, it's capped at 60 frames per second, but you'll still get a solid 60 frames per second and only seven watts TDP. So you'll get a good eight to 10 hours battery life on the OLED with this one, if you run it through GeForce now. Now there is an extra cost if you don't use the free tier and we'll put all the info in the description below. Okay, onto the update for this. If you're running this for the first time, the installation process is a little bit lengthy. With lots of little install dialogues here and there. You will need to use the touch screen or the mouse shortcuts initially. And once we go through the first section here, once we get the logo and the second part of the launcher and tons of dialogues for user licenses, we'll get a installation warning to say that this will not have enough space to fit the patch. Just hit yes to continue on this and it will warn you, but it will continue to install just fine anyway. Once that's finished, you will likely get a black screen. This can last a minute or two, or you can just manually exit out at this stage. And this is probably why it's unsupported for now, but it's not the best experience, but it has actually completed its installation. So once you've quit back out after it's run that initial installer, run it again, and now we can complete the process. Now again, this is fairly straightforward, but there is one little gotcha here, which will really set you back if you miss it. So when you hit play here, We'll go through another load screen and then we'll be presented with an accessibility menu option. Now it's a very small tick box and the text only just barely changes on the bottom section, but you do want to make sure that you enable accessibility mode and then press continue at the bottom when it says accessibility mode enabled. By doing this, it will automatically turn on the controller detection and everything will now be navigable via the controller with the controller buttons as standard. If you miss that, you will have to go through all of this section with the either touch screen or the keyboard commands or mouse shortcut. And it is really fiddly on the Steam Deck. So make sure you do hit that accessibility option from the start. If not, when you get to the main screen, you can go in and turn on the accessibility option and get those controller inputs back. Now, once we're into the game, everything does run very smooth. But as I said, make sure you go and quit the ZeniMax launcher that also runs in the background every time. Otherwise, you'll get a huge stutter spike. Although this can run on the Steam Deck at the high graphics preset, and we can also turn off some of the other effects like depth of field. Around towns, it does dip into the 40s, and in really busy towns, it even dips into the 30s. And in dungeons, we do still get around 90 frames per second, but we're sitting up in the 23 to 24 watts mode. So we're gonna lose about another half an hour battery over medium. Now with the medium graphic settings, okay, it doesn't look as good, though you're not gonna notice a huge amount of difference, especially when you're in bigger towns, you're barely gonna drop below 50 frames per second, and you're gonna have a much better experience overall with stability. So there we have it, that's how to play The Elder Scrolls Online. Let us know if you're going to be diving in for the free to play few days, or whether you're just going to start playing this again, ready for the Gold Road DLC. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.